La 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 la. Hey, for First News, I'm Chris. And I'm Micah, and I am getting ready for Music Palooza. May 15th in the sanctuary. I mean, we're gonna, the worship ministry is gonna be highlighted. Yep. The choirs are gonna sing, the yep. children are gonna sing, have a great time. Oh, yeah. And then we're gonna do a little church conference. Right. Which is important because we're gonna license Issa, your intern. Yep, intern Issa. And so, and then afterwards, we do what every good Baptist does after we gather as a group. Mm. Eat. We eat. Yes, please. It is gonna be, and it's gonna be a free meal. So, yeah. and that's next Sunday night at five o'clock. Yeah. Hope to see you there. Yeah. Now, Chris, when I was walking in this morning, yep. I was dropping my kids off at the nursery, right. and I saw there's like a lot of tables. Yeah. There. So one table has a bunch of crayons and colorful and a big feather flag. Uh huh. So spark. Right. VBS. VBS. You know what? I saw this number. Okay. While I was down there. Sixty-three. Sixty-three. This is how many more volunteers Ginger needs to put on the best. Vacation Bible School right. in the coastal. So world. we need you to sign up for that. Have you signed up? I have signed up for okay, that. Okay, well, good. Yeah. So go sign up at the table. You can volunteer to help. It's the end of June. Mm -hmm. It'll be in the morning. Right. And so eight thirty to noon commitment. Yep. And so it doesn't take all day or whatever like that. So yeah. then sign up for that. Mm -hmm. Then the very next table. Right next to that. I'll be at it. You're gonna be there. Yeah. So one we have hooks tickets. You know our church has season tickets to the hooks. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you can get four tickets to a Hooks game if right. they're not reserved. Take your family, take some friends, and invite them to church. Awesome. And so awesome. you just got to sign up, and then we'll print the tickets and give it out to you. So and that's that free. Stuff. That's free. Okay, okay. So, and then also, we're promoting a movie called Family Camp. Family Camp, the movie. Right. So the skit guys that we've shown their videos before yeah, in service. Yeah, I remember seeing them. That they have made a movie, a Christian-based movie, uh -huh. and we have reserved a theater at Cinemark 16 for May 22nd that evening, and we're selling tickets for only five dollars. Oh my goodness! And we have about 75 seats, so wow, gotta get them now. Wow! So I'll be there taking uh, money for tickets, getting you signed up. Uh, put your name down on the list, and then when we get our tickets, we'll get all that taken care of. How so. fun is that? As a church family, right. we're going to see a faith-based film called right. Family Camp, right. done by the skit guys, who we just saw one of their funny skits like just a few weeks ago. Yeah. So. Wow. So sign up for VBS, get your movie tickets, and go to the Hooks if you want to go to a baseball game. I tell you what. Okay. If you sign up for VBS today, VBS, yeah. and you want to go to a Hooks game, uh -huh. I'll give you free parking for the night you want to go. Really? Yeah. Free parking pass if you sign up for VBS yeah. tonight. That's awesome. Pretty good deal. I'd like that deal. And and I mean, going to the movies for only five dollars. Yeah. Five dollars a ticket. So get your family signed up. So. Yeah. Well, hey, for first hey, news. Wait. Oh. Oh no. Today's Mother's Today's Day. Today's Mother's Day. Hey, Mom. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, I love you. Yeah. Yeah. Can I borrow that okay. when you're done? Hey, we're running to Walmart. Hey, for first news, I'm Chris. Hi, Mrs. Scoglin. Could you tell my mom Happy Mother's Day for me? Thanks. And I'm Micah. Yes, it is Mother's Day, and I'm sure most of y'all have been thoughtful of that before now. So um, there is a photo op in the Welcome Center. There's a little backdrop, and we'd love for you to go in and take a picture with your family if you would like to do that. Um, we are glad you're here this morning for worship. We've got an exciting time of dedication at the end of the service today and look forward to that. If you are visiting the church for the first time, we would love for you to fill out the yellow card in the pew in front of you and place it in the offering plate as you leave or take it down to the welcome desk in front of the nursery. We have a little gift we would like to give you. Let's get started with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day you've given us. Thank you that we get to gather together as believers to praise and worship your name. I just ask that you speak through Brian and let your words come through him and just be with us this morning and help us as we celebrate those that brought us into this world, our moms, that we remember them and um, show them how much they mean to us. In your precious and holy name we pray, amen.
brought me from the darkness into glorious have come this morning to give thanks to our Savior for the blood applied to us so that we might have salvation through Jesus Christ. Let's stand together as we sing about the firm foundation we have.
We're going to kick it up a notch here. Sweetly echo the gospel call. pray to our solid rock. Father, Father God, we just love you this morning. We thank you, thank you, God, that you are our solid rock and we can stand firmly on you. Dear God, I thank you for this place and I thank you for this time that we have, that we can come together and do nothing but praise and glorify you. God, I pray that everything that is said, everything that is done, that will be a praise and a glory to you this morning. For that is why we're here to God, to lift up your name. God, now I thank you for this day, and I thank you for the privilege of being mothers, and God, also for the awesome responsibility that we have to lead our children in the way that you would have them go. God, I pray for your direction in this, and your, your peace and your comfort as we do this. God, now we just uh, ask you that you will bless this time as we offer our gifts to you, that you have been so gracious, gracious in giving to us, and we praise you this morning. Father, thank you, thank you, in Jesus' name. Do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? Do you wish that you could see it all made you? Is all creation groaning? Is a new creation coming? Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He's David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Worthy of all blessing and honor and 
Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, you are worthy. Remind us of today that we can trust you. You are worthy. You are, you are beyond able to take care of every need that we may ever have. Remind us today that you are trustworthy. that we can truly set our foundation for our very lives on you and the love that you have for us because you're worthy. Really, you're the only one who's worthy. Speak to us today. Be glorified in us today. Amen. We began a series last week and... For those that are already asking the question in your minds, yes, my voice is cracking a little bit. Thank you, South Texas and the weather. <clears throat> and so I apologize. I'm going to stand right here because I know that I may start coughing shortly and I didn't want to wear my wireless mic so that you had to endure that. Um, but last week we started a new series, Working Through the Gospel of Luke and looking specifically at the parables, the, the teachings of Jesus, the, the way that he used parables to instruct us, to give us truths to hold on to. Parables are just a form of teaching. And we talked last week about the fact that Jesus was the master teacher, is the master teacher. And he used all forms of teaching style, different things, that tools that were available uh, then and now to teach in a way that would be remembered, teach in a way that, that could be applied. And that's really what I want you to hear today is, is the importance of application. So Jesus used parables. And, and a parable is just taking something that we would see in our everyday life and applying to it a deeper truth, something, a different meaning, so that you can think of that. Uh, last week we talked about wineskins. You can think of a wineskin and think about the, the difference between a new one and an old one. And, and that reminds us that we are to stay flexible, that we are to stay teachable. So today we're going to look at this idea of building our house on a firm foundation. And so that should communicate to us, particularly here in Corpus Christi. How many of you have ever had foundation issues on your home? <clears throat> I don't understand why we build new homes and then two years later go back and spend several thousand dollars putting piers under it. Why didn't we just do that the first time? It's important to have that sure foundation, that, that footing. And so that's what I want us to hear today and what that means for us as believers. In, in Luke's gospel here in chapter 6, we see that at the beginning of the chapter, as we set up for this, this parable, that the Pharisees are out to get Jesus, which is fairly common in the gospels. Um, 
He's been questioned by the Pharisees about dishonoring the Sabbath. Earlier, we had seen his disciples walking through a field on, on a Sabbath and picking heads of grain and rubbing them in between their hands and eating uh, those, th- that wheat. He may think, well, that's silly. Why would that be a problem? Well, that was considered harvesting, and you don't work and harvest on the Sabbath. And to make matters worse, Jesus had just been to the synagogue and healed someone on the Sabbath. And so the Pharisees were questioning him and and out to get him. And so that's the scene. And so Jesus pulled away and he found a place that was good to teach. And we're told that people came from all over, all the regions to hear him, to listen to his words and to be healed by him. And so that's the background of what is happening. Jesus is teaching. He is surrounded by people who came from all over to hear him. People who were intrigued by him. People who wanted to follow him. And in the midst of that, he offers this parable. And here's what I want us to hear today. As we, before we begin looking at what he said, he begins this teaching In verse 46, he says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not do what I say? Now, the reason I want to point that out is I think it's it's extremely important for us to understand that these were people who were following Jesus. This was not the general public. This was people that actually came from miles and miles away to hear him. He's saying, why do you call me Lord? Now, the word Lord is a strong word. It's one that communicates authority. One that communicates submission on my part. This parable is directed at those people who offer hollow praise and shallow commitments. People that call him Lord, but don't do what he says. The people who come to church, but do not truly follow the Lord's teachings during the week. I should have said this from the outset. This is going to be uncomfortable. Not all the parables step on my toes, but this one certainly does. The people who say they trust Jesus, but actually put their faith elsewhere. Is that you today? I have to confess to you some days it's me. It's it's easy to become distracted. It's easy to say that I trust Jesus, but then I want to do things my own way. Am I the only one? So let's read the parable, understanding that this is directed to me and to you. It's easy for us to read scripture sometimes and think, man, I wish so-and-so would listen to this. We just need to understand this is written to us. and We can find ourselves in his teachings. Beginning in verse 46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? I will show you what is it, he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck the house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck the house, it collapsed, and its destruction was complete. Now here's one thing that we need to understand about the foundation. A foundation is something we don't really see, right? Once we've built a house, Joe, once you build a house, You lay the foundation, you build the house, you don't really see the foundation anymore, you see the house. And and so what we need to remember is there's no point 
in looking around at our neighbors and saying, they don't have a very good foundation. This, again, this parable is written to us, to, to us to look internally to see it, how is my foundation? Where have I placed my trust? He tells us that the one who hears and does not apply his teaching is the one who is familiar with faith, familiar with Jesus, aware of his teachings, but chooses not to obey, to build on a different foundation. I think everybody wants to go to heaven, but sometimes we just don't want our faith to get in the way of how we're living today. One of the songs, and I know he's not the only one that's recorded it, but David Crowder has a song, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. There's deeper meaning in that line. Most of us aren't ready to die today, but we do want to go to heaven. But the deeper meaning is to go to heaven, we have to die to ourselves. We have to make Jesus our Lord. And we've talked about this before, I say it often, that we don't mind Him being our Savior. Sometimes we resist on Him being our Lord. To really doing what He tells us that we need to do. But dying to self is being obedient to apply the teachings that Jesus has for us. The wise man, on the other hand, hears the message and puts it into practice. Building on a sure foundation, a solid rock, like we sang earlier. So we have to go deep. The foundation of a strong believer is faith and obedience. It's actually doing what Jesus says. It's full surrender. It is obedience to Jesus, following his teachings as a foundation of our lives. The wise builder strikes rock before laying a foundation. On the other hand, the foundation of the fool is just whatever might seem right at the time. Whatever culture says following our own desires and our own will. The foolish builder does not dig down and find a solid footing, so what he builds cannot withstand storms that come. So the question for us today to consider is, is where is our foundation? Where do we place our trust, our hope? Are we obedient to what Jesus says? Or are we like those that he says, that we call him Lord, Lord, but we don't apply what he says. You've heard me say this before, but Baptists have always been known traditionally as people of the book. We pride ourselves in studying the word and and really knowing what it says. And some of us do a better job of that than others. But the problem I see so often, not just in Baptist life, but in Christendom altogether, but particularly for us, we need to look at us is we may know what it says, but does it affect the way that we live? Does it make it from our head to our hearts? Do we apply what it says? Jesus says the one who does that has that foundation, has placed his trust in him. Is Jesus trustworthy? That wasn't very convincing. Is Jesus trustworthy? Amen. Amen. His teachings are trustworthy. We can build our very lives, our existence. He offers us eternal security, yes, but he also offers us a fulfilled life now. We need to trust in him, place our trust in him, place our foundation in him. Go deep and understand what he has for us so that we can live that out. What serves as your foundation? That's an important question to ask ourselves because storms are going to come. He says when the man builds his house, when he goes down deep and he places his foundation on the solid rock and he builds his house from there, when the floods come and the torrent hits that house, it doesn't shake. Why? Because it is well built, he said. It has got a firm foundation. The, The picture I have in my mind of that is wading out into the surf. How many of you like to go to the beach? Anybody? Okay, we live on the coast. More than four need to like to go to the beach. Have you ever waded out into the surf on one of those days where the waves are, we don't have huge waves here, but we have waves. And, and feeling that the, the force 
of that wave hitting your body as you wade out into the surf. That's the picture here. Those storms are going to come. That torrent, that force is going to come. Jesus never said, follow me and you'll never have a bad day the rest of your life. He never said that. In fact, he said things like, they hate me, they're going to hate you. He's telling us, the storms are going to come. But if your foundation is secure, it won't matter. It won't be pleasant, but it won't matter. Storms will come. He promises that that that's going to happen, but he also promises that he's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us. So we have to remember, we can't control the storms. We can't navigate and miss all the, the bad things. Bad things happen to good people. That's just a fact. We live in a fallen world. We live in a world that has been distorted and demented by sin. And so bad things do happen to good people. That is a given. We can't control that. What we have to remember is we need to be prepared for it. And the time to prepare is before the storm hits. It's a little late when the storm hits, right? We being from West Texas, My wife and I grew up out there. I was born in Abilene, grew up in the little town of Kermit. Just before you fall off the edge of the earth. She grew up in Midland, so same same area. The furthest east and south we'd ever lived was, was Granbury, Texas, and then we went back to Lubbock. So we'd never been anywhere close to the coast in all of our adult life, all of our lives in general. So when Hurricane Harvey was predicted, and they were saying, well, it'll be a Category 1, maybe a Category 2, I started looking, and that's 80-mile-an-hour winds. Well, in West Texas, that's a good golf day because winds blow up there all the time. And so we were thinking, okay, why is everybody freaking out? But we did what everybody says you're supposed to do. We boarded up our windows, which, by the way, let me just... for if. For those of you who haven't lived through this before, something I learned that would be helpful for you moving down the road if this were to happen again for us. When you use your cordless screw gun to put up your your plywood uh, window coverings, charge your batteries again. Because after the hurricane was over, all my batteries were dead and we were without power for three days and we couldn't take the, the boards down and we just lived in a sauna for about three or four days until the time to prepare for a storm is before it happens. As a believer, we need to know, just count on it. You may not feel comfortable doing this, but if you're in the middle of a storm now, raise your hand. Some of us are in the middle of a storm right now. But if you're not... Count on the fact that you will be. And I don't mean to be a negative prophetic voice, but it's just going to happen because we live in a fallen world. We will be in the midst of a storm, so the time to prepare for that is now. Now. We need to make sure that our foundation is firm, that we can withstand. We can withstand those storms. I said a moment ago, we can't really see the foundation of other people. In fact, sometimes we don't know for sure where our foundation is. One of my life verses comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, when the man said, I believe, help my unbelief. We don't know for sure. But I tell you, what happens with the middle of a storm is we figure out where our foundation is. We figure out whether our foundation is firm or not, whether we have truly placed our trust in Jesus. So another question I have for you is, how are you preparing for the storms? Eugene Peterson. The book is wonderful, but the title just speaks volumes. Eugene Peterson has written a book titled, A Long Obedience in the Same Direction. 
when Jesus talks about a foundation, he gives that picture, that parable, to help us understand that that foundation comes and not just hearing what Jesus says, but actually putting it into practice. Obedience. Listening to what he says and putting it into practice. Applying it to our lives. That is how we build a firm foundation. A.T. Robertson, a longtime theologian, says that's really the point of every sermon is how do we apply it? The point of every sermon should be the actual application of the truth of God's word. Every time we go to scripture, it's not to make ourselves feel better. It's to learn how to apply it to our lives so that our foundation continues to go deeper and deeper into what Jesus says. How would you describe your foundation for your life? Obedience is where it starts. We can't say we are Jesus followers if we don't actually follow him. It's funny how that word works. His teachings, the major and the minor, some of the greatest teachings that he had, we can, we can, I've seen it, cross-stitched on a pillow or, or calligraphy on a wall. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's a big one. But what about the minor ones too? Things like love your enemy. Well, that's fun. Bless those who curse you. Hmm, getting better. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other. Go the second mile. Are we putting those things into practice? Are we looking at what Jesus teaches us and actually applying it to our lives? Or are we just those people that say, Lord, Lord, but do our own thing? Here's the good news. I've been stepping on toes. Well, I haven't, but Jesus' parable has. But there's hope. It is never too late to go deeper. It is never too late to apply what Jesus says. To truly live into what He wants for us. That fulfilled life. Applying His teachings to the way that we live. It's never too late. God is a God of second chances. And third and fourth and fifth. Praise Jesus for that. We can always build and rebuild and go deeper the rock. Jesus is our firm foundation. He is the rock. It's never too late to grow deeper. This parable is written to us. And as I said at the beginning, I have to confess to you sometimes I'm like that person. I say, Lord, Lord, but yet something else comes along, shinier, more interesting, and I give in to that. This is a daily obedience of really looking into God's Word and applying it to the way that we live so that we can make sure that our foundation is strong so that when those storms come, and they will, we're ready. that We can withstand what the world throws at us. It's my challenge for us this morning. Let's make sure your faith is built on the solid rock. Make sure your faith is built on that solid rock. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this teaching. We thank you that that we understand that it is written not for them, but for me. For us. And so today I pray that you will help us truly analyze before the storm hits, analyze where our foundation is. Do we trust in our culture and our world? Do we trust in ourselves? Do we trust in the government? Where do we place our trust? Or do we trust in you? Do we find our hope? our peace, our comfort in you. 
Help us to have the courage to ask that question of ourselves today. Even though we may not like the answer that we find. Remind us that even if we don't like the answer that we find, that our trust isn't really as firmly placed in you as it should be, that it's never too late. It's never too late to trust you with everything. In fact, we need to be reminded that it's a daily surrender. It's a daily obedience. And so Jesus, help us today to realize that it is so important for us to trust you fully and to apply what what you have taught us knowing that that is the best way for us to live our lives. Be glorified in us. Be glorified through us. Amen. Just a moment, I'll have you stand for a time of response. You may be looking at your watches saying, well, he's a little early today. We're going to celebrate parent and child dedication in just a moment, so I wanted to make sure we had time for that. But as we enter into this time of response, maybe for you it's, it's just a time to ask the question, where is my foundation? Wrestle with that. That's okay. If there's a decision that needs to be made, maybe you're one of those that says, I, I've never really trusted him. I've never made that decision. I, I want to make that decision today. Today's the best day you could ever do it. If you'd like prayer, I'll be here. Chris will be here. Uh, Stephen will be here. But ask that question. Where is my foundation today? We stand and sing together. Respond to him. When we walk with the Lord in the light What a glory he sheds on our way. Let us do his good will. He abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy. to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief or a loss, not a
what he says we will do. When he sends, we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no All right, now it's time I get to introduce you to a few families of the church that are coming before you to present their children and going to dedicate them to raise them in the church and to love the Lord and to teach them scripture. So um, I'm not sure where they are. They're here somewhere. The, uh, we're gonna, the all subs are not here. We have a sick sibling this morning, so they weren't able to be here this morning. Um, the Kelly family, Bellamy, I know she was just outside the door. <laughs> Come on, Courtney. All right, we've got uh, parents are Courtney and Luke and big brother Danny and baby Bellamy Kelly to introduce to you this morning. And we also have behind them the Rothenay family. Uh, we've got Claire and Chloe are the children. They are new to the church, and so we're excited to have them participate in this time of dedication as they continue to raise their children to be part of the church, but more importantly, to know the Lord. And also, I would like to introduce you to the stories. I know they were here. Okay, there they are. And um, Kimberly and Jonathan with little Parker. We have prayed through this entire pregnancy, and we are so glad that you get to be here and part of this dedication this morning. So, Pastor B. Well, this is always a wonderful Sunday uh, to do this, and I'm going to stand over here where, so that you can all hopefully see them. Uh, it's important what we do, and I know for some, it may be a little foreign to think that we're dedicating children. What we're really doing is dedicating the parents uh, as well as the children, and so you've brought your children here uh, for this service of dedication and of celebration. It's a service of thanksgiving, and we offer God the gratitude of our hearts for the hope and happiness which comes through the gift of a child. Hi. Hi. <clears throat> in parenthood, we see the opportunity to participate with God in both creating and caring. A child is a sign of God's hope for the future, his pledge for tomorrow. As I said, this dedication is really twofold. First, there's a dedication of you as parents. You have been entrusted with the very stewardship of life itself. This wonder of the grace of God we call a child is given to you for your protection, your nurture, and your care. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and you just simply say, I do, or we do, rather. Do you as a parent recognize the sovereignty of God in your life and in the life of your child, and do you commit yourselves and your family to his lordship in all things? Do you recognize your child as a gift from God and humbly express your thanksgiving and praise to him as a gift? Do you commit yourselves to striving to raise your child in the nurture and admonition of the Lord? Amen. And lastly, do you as parents commit yourself to strive to establish Christian patterns of behavior as a model to be followed by your child? Now, the second part of this dedication is actually for us. As a church, we are called to consecrate ourselves to the task of sharing the faith, the teaching of the word, and the sharing of the love of Christ in a world that is increasingly hostile to what we believe about life and goodness. We pledge ourselves and our resources to partner with you that your children might grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. If as a church you are willing to join me in a mutual commitment to these children, will you say, Amen. 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 Let's pray.
over these families together. Lord God, I thank you for this day. I thank you that each of these parents has seen this as an important commitment on their part to present their children similar to what uh, the Jewish religion would do many, many years ago. When Jesus was uh, presented in the temple, they present their children today. And by doing so, they're making a commitment to raise their children, to follow you, to do everything in their power to take care of them, and nurture them, and to guide them toward you. And so, Lord, I pray for their strength. I pray for their clarity in knowing how to do that. Help us as a church to be here for them, to walk alongside them as together we partner with them and to raise their children to follow you. And so, Lord, we dedicate them to you. We dedicate these children to you. We pray for their protection. We pray for their hearts. We pray that you will pursue them just as you always do and draw them to yourself. We give all this to you in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen. And now we have something for each family. All right. Very good. Okay, you can be seated. Did I forget something? Oh, Ginger's going to get a picture of him. Okay. So if y'all want to go follow Ginger, yeah. Sorry, my head's a little swimmy today. I do appreciate your patience with me this morning. <clears throat> I will hope to be better next week. But as we are dismissed to go to Bible study, may the God who gives us truth, the God who is truth, remind us today that there is no more sure foundation than Him. And may we trust in Him fully. Amen. We're dismissed. Praise the Lord.